No Direction Home, Bob Dylan, 2005 documentary, directed interestingly by Martin Scorsese, examines the most important and prominent period in the life and work of Bob Dylan, the 1960s. The film consists of interviews with Dylan himself, that's obviously an advantage when you're making a documentary about a living person, as well as many of his friends, collaborators, fellow artists from that time. Uh, also features many, many concert recordings, photos, behind the scenes, records and clips. Despite the fact that it basically focuses on one decade in the life of a very prominent artist who went on to create and perform for many years to come, there is a lot of material in here. Uh, and that, I think, has to do with the fact that Dylan himself is a really interesting person, a sort of enigmatic figure that is difficult to read and understand, even after watching the movie. Hell, even some of his close friends who are also asked about it say that they cannot ever fully comprehend him and the way he thinks. And I want to say that in his interviews, he sort of reminded me of Elon Musk. He has a similar look in his eyes that suggests that those cogs inside inside his head are turning faster than his uh, mouth can articulate those, those thoughts. On the other hand, there is the entire context of Dylan. As a folk artist in the early 1960s, then as a protest songwriter and the symbol of many leftist groups, and finally as a sort of perceived traitor almost to the genre that spawned him when he finally decided to abandon acoustic folk and went for a more electric sound. And the movie does go in deep on all of those aspects of Dylan as a person and as a legend almost. The first hour or so focuses almost entirely on the musical aspect of his work, uh, where he came from, who were his contemporaries, how Greenwich Village and the Gaslight community were back in those days in New York, how this was almost a mecca of American folk music and how Dylan began by covering all those other prominent artists but soon just exploded with his own art uh, and almost redefined uh, the scene by himself. And I think that this part drags a little bit. I have to say I consider myself pretty close to the target audience for this film. I was familiar with Dylan and his work already and I knew some of the background and I'm also interested in music in general. But despite all those things, the pacing is just a little bit too slow. It feels more like a group of friends reminiscing uh, together and showing you their old records rather than an actual documentary film. And I think this approach will not work for just about anyone. However, as soon as we get to see Dylan start recording his, his own music and quickly get to the peak of his fame, which by the way he did in his early 20s, which is just unreal when you consider the amount and the quality of iconic songs that he created in just those few years. It's really unbelievable. So we get to see Dylan at the top of the world, basically. And with this, there comes the, the baggage. The fact that he was used as a poster boy for the freedom and anti-war and anti-segregation movements. That he was celebrated so much as this classic American folk hero. And also all of the stuff that was happening in the US at that time. Uh, MLK's famous speech where Dylan also performed. And then the assassination of Kennedy. And this part was really interesting to me because the movie shows you how exactly Dylan fell into the trap of his own fame and of being sort of defined as someone who he didn't necessarily want to be. Uh, all this time he was more interested in just making more music than being uh, this icon for the people on the pedestal. And this sheds a lot of light on what happened later, how he began to play different music, more electric and more pop-oriented than before, and how his own fans started hating him for it. And I share some of those opinions as someone who listened to his music before. I think that he never came close to his first couple of albums after changing direction. But the movie doesn't try to make a case that the, his later work is objectively better or defend him in any way. I felt that it just tries to give us this inside look into why he did those things, how he didn't really give two shits about what people wanted him to be. And I can understand that and I can get behind that. And I think after seeing the movie and learning about all those things, I respect him much, much more. So it may seem like it's the perfect movie, but, um, well, almost perfect, but there is a another significant problem, the runtime. The film is obscenely long. It runs for three and a half hours. And as I said, it's not a breeze, especially in the first part. There are movies which are three hours long, but fly past you. Uh, Lawrence of Arabia, Blade Runner 2049, Lord of the Rings trilogy. This isn't one of them. Uh, again, as I think I've mentioned, uh, at times it feels more like listening to a bunch of old folks reminiscing about their glory days. 
And in a way that is fine because the, the nature of storytelling here kind of fits its subject. But that said, it meant that um, it's difficult to recommend this movie to just about anyone. I think a casual viewer will be discouraged. But if you do have an interest in music and you'd like to learn more about Bob Dylan, uh, just put the movie on and let it play sort of in the background while you do something at the same time. I don't know, clean your room, wash your windows, sort your books or clothes. And in this way, I think you will like it.